Hello, this is Mrs. Heisenmuddle, and today I am going to be going over uh, the accumulator pattern for Python. I'm using Nthought Canopy is my basically my editor for Python, and an accumulator pattern, remember, is a running tally, so it's a way to keep track of something as you go. So let's assume I have a whole bunch of squares and they all have different areas and I want to add all the areas up. So that's kind of the the random thing I'm going to go with here because it's kind of believable. So the very first thing I have to do in doing any function is I have to define it and that's called def. In this case I'm going to go with um, sum of the areas. Sum of the areas. I could say of that's probably more Pythonic, sum of areas, and I have to give it some kind of placeholder here. So I'm going to call that um, rectangles. So these are all squares, by the way. Actually, I'll just say squares because that's what I mean, squares. So they're all going to be squares, and I'm going to put a colon at the end of that line because it is the end of that, it is an actual definition, it's an important line, and I'm going to put a number sign here to just so I can put in a comment that tells you what I did. So notice it bumped me over four, so I'm going to put in some notes that explain what this is going to do. So squares is a list of squares. And that's going to be in the form of ints or floats, because I could do either. And it's going to, again, it's going to accept ints or floats, and it's going to return um, the total of the areas of the squares. Uh, one, two, three, that's a multi-line comment. So notice that the three quoting marks gives me a multi-line comment. The hashtag gives me a single line comment. So in this case, I now have to initialize some value. I have to tell it where to start from. In this case, I'm going to say total area. And I'm going to initialize that to zero. And I'm going to put in a little hashtag here, initialize. And notice it went orange. It didn't go orange because it's wrong. It went orange because I haven't used it yet. And it's giving me the benefit of the doubt that I will eventually use it, but it's warning me that I need to use it. So for each area in squares, so for each area in squares, I need to do something. That's called a for loop. And in this case, for area in squares, I'm going to come down here and I need to have total area equal space. There we go. The space is not actually important, but it looks better, so I put it in. Uh, total area is going to have to equal the total area, whatever the total area was, plus, and because you figure out a square uh, area by taking its width, and I assume that's what I'm giving it, is the width or the height, and doubling it, or basically squaring it. So I'm going to say times the uh, area squared. Actually, that would be the width squared, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and put a square. So in this case, I'm going to say width, because I'm going to actually, the widths are what's going to be in the squares. And then this would then be total area for every width. Then this would also be width. So, what I did, let's go back and review, I sum of 
sum of areas of some squares. Squares is a placeholder. I'm setting the total area to zero. For every width that's inside the list squares, I'm going to take the total area, is going to be found by taking the original total area, adding to it the width that's squared. So every number inside of this list is going to get squared and then added to the other numbers. This is the part that actually makes this the accumulator. Now, I have to do something with this because at this point it, it might be doing something but I can't see anything. So in this case I'm going to return and notice I backed up one to do it. Total area. Oops, that's an underline. And the reason I had to back up was I needed to have it be inside the definition but outside of the for loop. So it's not reporting every, it's not returning every single time, it's only returning after it gets the final total area. So I'm not getting a red and orange line, so I'm going to go ahead and run it, execute it with my little green play button, and then I'm going to call it. Well, before I can call it, I have to give it that list of squares. So in this case, I'm going to call the list, and I can call the list anything I want. So I'm going to call him square bob. And square bob is a list of areas or a list of widths. So one, four, five, six point three, seven, nine, twenty-two. So there are my rectangles. And notice I did put a float in the middle of that as well as ints. So ints are integers, they're whole numbers, and floats are any number with a decimal point. So it took my list, and now all I have to do is call my function sum of areas. In this case, I named my list square bob, so square bob. Done. So now I have a total sum. If I square each of these, then I will add them all together and get 695.69. Now, I didn't put any units in there. I don't need any units. And what I do need is um, basically to follow the basic steps for an accumulator pattern. I defined it. I initialized it. I used my for loop and put in my accumulator. So it's adding to itself over and over again. It's making that running tally. And then I'm returning the final value of the running tally. I hope that helps. That is the accumulator looping pattern for Python.